defended the NFL's Rooney Rule, which requires teams to interview at least one minority candidate before hiring a head coach. But the NCAA has no such rule, and the state of African-American coaches is less clear in the college ranks. There are now 16 black head coaches of 120 FBS schools, about 13%. It's the highest ever. Those coaches have not been getting jobs at the country's top programs. Helping us to get a focus on this picture are Joker Phillips, who is the head football coach at the University of Kentucky, Lamonti Jones, an ESPN.com page two contributing writer and the host of The Morning Jones on Sirius Hardcore Sports Radio. Also, Dr. Todd Boyd, professor of critical studies at the USC School of Cinematic Arts. He's also the author of the blog, Notorious PhD. And we bring in Dave Zirin, an author and the sports editor of The Nation. Thanks, all of you, for joining us. Uh, Joker, let me start with you. That number, when you see 16 out of 120 FBS jobs, yours is one of those. What do you make of that number? Well, um, I'm proud of the number, because when I was coming out of high school, um, there wasn't a lot of people that looked like me that was, that was by, uh, behind the head coaching desk. So uh, we've made some progress. We're not nearly where we, uh, we all feel like we should be, but there, there has been some progress in the last couple of years. Bamani, as we said, you know, but Coach Phillips here took over a school that has a terrific basketball tradition, is not known as a football powerhouse. There's been criticism that some of those jobs are going to programs that have to be more broad-minded in who they can hire. What do you think about not just the jobs, but the quality of jobs that coaches are getting? Oh, that's absolutely true. You can look at the state of New Mexico. You got Mike Loxley has a job in New Mexico and New Mexico State, Dwayne Walker. And if I'm not mistaken, New Mexico State had to ask the community to donate snacks because the players did not have enough to eat. So where guys get the jobs is important, and there are a lot of factors behind that. One thing that's really helpful is if you are really able to recruit. Loxley's been awful at New Mexico State, but Maryland gave him a thought because he's such a good recruiter in that area. So it's really kind of a nuanced issue with the new landscape of the game. Todd Boyd, over the years, we used to hear that uh, people said flat out, well, uh, African-American coaches don't have the essentials to lead their program. Can't be a, in a leadership position like a quarterback or even a linebacker. What do you hear today, and how much do you think the reasons have changed and how people evaluate coaches? Well, I, I think there was a time when, you know, people openly expressed such thoughts. You wouldn't hear people saying such things openly. Now, they may believe it, but they wouldn't say that openly. But I think, like anything, you know, there's a process to becoming a head coach at a major football program. It doesn't just happen by coincidence. And I think, you know, the process, uh, the form, whatever is needed in terms of people being able to get on the right uh, track so as to be able to have the opportunity to be in a position for a major job is what we need to look at. Obviously, to this point, if you're talking about 16, that number is uh, far too low. Um, the people who make these decisions, college presidents, um, athletic directors, there's not enough African-American athletic directors either. The people who make these decisions need to be uh, forced to recognize that this is something that has to be dealt with proactively. Let us not forget that the NFL sidelines would not look the way they look now if uh, the late Johnny Cochran and another attorney were not about to sue the NFL, thus came the Rooney Rule. So there may be a time now where we need to think about doing something similar in college to uh, improve the ranks of African-American coaches. And Dave Zarin, what do you think about that? There is no Rooney Rule in the NCAA. Should they be looking at it? Oh, absolutely they should be looking at it because I believe it was four African-American head coaches in 2008. That was 3.3% of all, of all jobs. Uh, now it's 16, but that number's still way too low. As, as Chris Rock said, what, do, do you want a cookie? I mean, so you go from 4 to 16, that's still way too low. And the reason why I say it's too low is you have to look at the number of African-American assistant coaches in the college game. I believe the last count I saw was over 300 African-American assistant coaches. And that says to me that you have a pool of people who would take that job, who would apply for that job, who could be a Raheem Morris in the college ranks, but aren't being given the opportunity. And Dr. Boyd is absolutely right. There is no Rooney Rule without the threat of a mass class action lawsuit against the NFL. And I don't see what else can be done to actually propel uh, college presidents and college athletic directors to take this issue more seriously. Joker, when you were hired in Kentucky, you said that uh, yours was going to be the face of that program. You said, quote, we want to get the word out that things have changed here. What did you mean by that? Well, I mean, the state of Kentucky has had the perception that uh, 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 about African Americans and not only did my university here at the University of Kentucky uh, uh, take a leap of faith in hiring me an African American but um, uh, a program down
down the road, I uh, hired a friend of mine, Charlie Strong, and another program down the road a little bit further, um, or Willie Taggart. So I think uh, things have changed not only uh, at this university, but here in the state of Kentucky, and I think it helped the perception here in, in the state of Kentucky. You know, you mentioned Charlie Strong. When he uh, when he had been passed over for a number of jobs as an assistant when he was still a coordinator before he was hired at Louisville, uh, he said flat out what he had heard coming back to him from people was, uh, no one said it officially, but that his wife was white and people were going to be uncomfortable with that. Monty Jones, that same talk came up after Turner Gill was passed over at Auburn. He never addressed it. It was never on a press release. But how real is that? Well, I can't tell you how real it is, but we have to remember this. So many of these programs are dependent upon donations. The University of Georgia gets 26, it got $26 million in football donations, according to the Indianapolis Star, and that's somewhere around half of their budget. So if you're asking people to give money to your program, why do they do it? It's a lot of weird things that make people want to be boosters. Part of it is they want to hang out with the coach, and if they don't want to hang out with the coach and his white wife, I don't know how you get them to give that money. And that's where this becomes difficult as far as I'm concerned. There's no enforceable mechanism to make a Rooney Rule possible in college. And then beyond that, when you're going to ask people to give you money out of the goodness of their hearts or whatever makes them give the money, you're going to have a hard time telling them that they have to give it no matter what you decide to do. Choker, let me bring that same question back to you uh, about how real that right. factor is. Your, your wife is white. Uh, was it yeah, ever a factor? Wife is white. What to, how much do you think that's you know, played I mean, a factor in how people have evaluated you over the years? Well, the, the one job that, that's perfect for me has been here at the University of Kentucky. My, my wife is a graduate, actually has a doctorate, her master's and her doctorate from here at the University of Kentucky. So uh, we're familiar with all the people that's uh, associated with this program and uh, the people of this, associated with this program that actually give the money do want to hang out with us. So it's a little bit different for us, um, but I don't know how it would be in other programs that did not know me and my wife, but this program here, like I said, all the people that give money do want to hang out with us. I mean, I'm sure there's some that don't, but I feel that a lot of them do want to hang out with us and, and feel comfortable with us leading this program. Professor Boyd, Bamani kind of touched on this, but that, that whole issue uh, of, of interracial marriage, who cares about that today and why? Well, I mean, you know, there are people who have uh, opinions about a number of sort of personal lifestyle issues that is a factor, but I think it's a minor factor. I think when you're talking about um, universities, universities in my mind have, have a different mandate than the NFL. The NFL is a for-profit business. I understand the money involved in college athletics, but my point is uh, universities have traditionally been leaders in our society in terms of diversity, um, and so I think it's a point where, again, college presidents and athletic directors have to step up. The bottom line is if you have a winning program, people will give money. That's, I mean, that's straightforward. Um, it's taking that risk, taking that leap, looking at a guy like, you know, Gene Chizik and looking at his record at Iowa State, and looking at uh, uh, Hope, the guy Michigan just hired, looking at his record at San Diego State. You have to do some creative thinking to look at that record and say, I'm going to give this guy the keys to, you know, drive this Maybach. Um, and my point is, if you just looked at their record, they wouldn't have the job. But somebody said there's something beyond this record that says this person can be successful. And that's the same thing that's going to be needed if we're going to change the ranks of African-American coaches, maybe going against some of these boosters. These boosters don't run universities. They want to contribute, but they have to do so at the university's discretion. And I think sometimes people need to be led as opposed to uh, waiting on them to do the right thing. Dave Zyron, uh, that's a tough balance for some schools to strike. To, to strike, You've got presidents brought in sometimes primarily as fundraisers. What is it going to take with that relationship between administration and the people writing the checks to change this issue? It's a good question, but I do know that there is no organization with more rules than the NCAA. I mean, they've got rules governing just about anything. I mean, if you want to bend down and tie an athlete's shoes as an assistant coach, I think you need to get clearance. So the idea that they can't have a rule to just mandate that there is a more open interview process to me is ludicrous and should be seen as unacceptable. Remember, one of the justifications for the Rooney Rule in the first place was this idea of saying if even you have more African-American faces sitting at a table across from general managers and across from ownership, even that in and of itself is, is at least a starting point to progress. It's a starting point to breaking down some of those walls. A starting point, frankly, to break down an owner's box that in the NFL is, of course, 100% white. I mean, you have something similar in the NCAA where 91% of athletic directors and university presidents are white. 
So it's not to say that there needs to be set aside hiring, but there, I think there does need to be some sort of set aside interview process to try to make the system more fair. And I totally agree that with winning comes the boosters. We can't have boosters lead us. Otherwise, college football would be even more of a Gamora than it already is. Joker Phillips, what about that uh, that dynamic uh, when, when you're trying to convince universities to take a chance on somebody? Uh, what is it like to walk into an interview room and, and have that conversation with those people? Well, first of all, I, I would like to see a Rooney Rule in, in NCAA also. I mean, I, I've had friends that, that have called it a token interview. I, I don't view it as a token interview. I've, I've talked to plenty of friends that, that had, had an interview and thought it might be a token interview. I'm one that think, go to the interview. You never know. I mean, go there and impress them enough that, that they leave there thinking they've got to hire this guy. Um, and, and those guys who are in that room, in, in, in college um, uh, hiring process, there's not just one guy usually making the decision. There's usually assistant ADs uh, in the room. There's usually some, some boosters. Um, you never know how those all those people branch off and go to other programs that, that they have had the chance to set and interview you that they might come back some other day and say, you know, this guy was impressive. Uh, we didn't hire him at this school, but we uh, need to interview him at this school, and, and he might get the job at the, at the school that one of the assistant ADs or, or somebody has, has went to. So I just think that uh, it, it would be great for us to, to implement a, a Rooney Roo in, in the NCAA. Well, Mario, you had, a, you had a point you wanted to jump in and make. we got about a minute left. Well, there are a couple of things. One, institutionally, you have to look at what the NCAA does and whether they have the enforcement to tell schools, okay, this is what you're going to do to get an interview. But I think we need to look now at who the guys are really that are getting jobs, where they're getting them, and why. And Joker brought up, it's interesting, Kentucky has, has a poor reputation on race that may or may not be that fair. But it stands to reason that it would make sense that a school like that would look toward a black coach. Look at Virginia with Mike London. They've had a similar situation, and they look at him, and he can recruit the Hampton Roads area very well, which Virginia has done a horrible job with over recent years. So it's so much more nuanced than, you know, who likes whom, who di dislikes whom. But the one thing I have to say, boosters have run these programs for a really long time, and they're not going to stop leading these programs. And if you need their money to build stadiums and to buy people out, then you're at their mercy, no matter who wants to say it. And we can say, oh, well, that's no big deal. But once again, if they're chipping 50% of the athletic budget, good luck telling them that they don't get to decide who's the coach. All right, for Monty Jones, we're going to see you at 4.30 Eastern today and tomorrow, filling out on Rome is burning. The rest of our panel, Joker Phillips, Dave Zirin, and Professor Todd Boyd, thanks so much for joining us.